Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your July 2024 forecast. I hope everybody's doing well. It's great to see you. Before we get started, just a quick reminder, you can always use this for sun, rising, and moon. Let's begin with the channeled messages. The first thing that I saw in dreams and meditation this morning was an image of a flower that needed a little bit of love. It was wilted, it needed some sustenance, it needed some care. And this indicates for some of you a point uh, where maybe there's diminishing returns. You might feel a sense of being depleted yourself. So sometimes this is from overwork. Uh, it could be a lack of support or appreciation. And the main message from spirit is to take care of yourself. I featured the Four of Swords because one of the easiest and best ways to do so is rest and meditation. But I did use the word sustenance because that's what came through. Doing things in your life that nourish you. It can be reading a book, listening to a podcast, arts and crafts. It could be getting involved in the community. Whatever it is that makes you feel like you're plugged in, um, recharging your battery is a really big part of this message. This is going to give you the energy and the inspiration that you need to be able to follow through on other things that are aligning in the future for you. So let go of anything that kind of uh, feels like it's tapping you out or kind of like weighing you down. This is a moment for you to just practice good self-care. Sleep, rest, meditation, absolutely big takeaways from this. The next thing that I saw was the power of collaboration and also the opportunity to connect with others. I featured the Ten of Cups because this can come in many ways, shapes, or forms. It could be love. Some of you might be uh, finally connecting with someone and it just feels really good to have that energy in your life. But it could be a bigger sort of you know, chosen family. You're deciding to spend time with friends. You're leaning on the support of colleagues or other people in your life. There's power in numbers. That was one of the big takeaways that I got from this. Um, I, in my meditation, I saw several hands that were intertwined or connected. And I just felt this sense of community, support, and a new sense of ease. Like you don't have to carry the weight of the world on your back alone. I thought of a mantra here and I was talking to a neighbor actually about adding this very beginning piece in here because you've all heard the latter part, which is I'm open to receive love and abundance in the highest forms. But it doesn't really work unless you believe the first part of it, which is I am worthy. I'd really like you to focus on feeling that sense of deserving and being worthy of receiving. And then you could set into your mind sort of the vision of the Ten of Cups, friends, family, love, and other opportunities, all overflowing, all coming through and presenting themselves to you. And just thinking to yourself, yes, bring it on, right? One last note on this, I mentioned networking could also be really valuable. So for those of you that might be job seeking or maybe just trying to find um, someone in your life or a group of people in your life that have common interests, this is going to help you feel like you're part of something bigger. And it really does help you get out of your own headspace a little bit as well. All right, let's give the cards a shuffle and see what additional messages are coming through. We'll look for those opportunities um, that I featured here, opportunities for new friends, new connections, and areas where you might be able to find support or sustenance. Let's get started. Already a lot of energy around finding balance or reestablishing it with these two uh, cards with scales in them. So big message there around that already. All right, and some major changes and just finding ease in that change. Very cool. Okay, we just got a volunteer. We actually got two volunteers here, so we're going to leave these two here.
right, here we go. Let's get started. We're gonna begin with the dual catalyst first. So the catalyst basically helps you make necessary change and movement in your life. The first card that came through to help with that is Nebula, and we have gold. What's really interesting is um, a heavier sort of metal like gold is created in a supernova, and a supernova leaves something like a nebula behind it. So when a star dies, that big cloud that remains afterwards is then basically the material for the next generation of stars and planets. In the beginning though, things are messy and that's what a nebula represents. So one of your opportunities this month is to see the diamond in the rough, to see what's available to you even before it fully takes shape or form. And many of you may play a little bit of uh, sort of like catch up when it comes to clearing things out in your life. So you may feel inspired to go clean out the closet. You may be looking at your accounting and thinking, you know what, I really need to get organized with my, um, with my budget. And there may be other aspects of your life where you just feel like it's a little messy. Rather than getting into a place of panic, I really love that in the opportunity space, we have this card saying, it's gonna be all right, everything is fine. Even if something you know fell out of expectation, you're going to be able to manage it. You're gonna be able to pick yourself up. We have the judgment card in the outcome and you're gonna be able to rise up. The card is reversed, so some of it is just moving beyond disbelief and seeing yourself as the phoenix rising from this ash. Uh, if there's anything that isn't clear in your life right now, ask. Literally nebulous means just sort of like confusing or ambiguous. So if you feel yourself in this state where it's like, I don't know, I don't understand, it's, it's too much, then <laughs> come out of the fog and just ask a question. You also may have this sort of uh, difficulty in concentrating. There may be something in front of you where it's just too much. Take a break. Um, back into the channeled messages. This is going to help you out. So um, if it's been a while since you've taken a holiday, a vacation, or some time off, this will help you. It's going to help you clear your energy. It's going to help you clear your mind. You're going to be able to see through the fog and you would be like that new star at the center and you'll start to spin things into motion. Gold comes out of that mess. Like I said, a supernova gives us heavier um, metals and it gives us elements like diamonds and other things. So all of that stuff comes from an exploded star. There's something valuable left over when something's finished, even when something finishes in a messy state. So your big opportunity right now is seeing the, the sort of like silver lining. Now, the other thing that came through when I saw this intuitively was fool's gold um, because the card was in reverse. So sometimes we see something around us that is shiny, it glitters, but when we look at it more closely with discernment, with uh, an inquisitive nature, maybe even a little bit of skepticism, we see through that. So make sure that you do your homework and research and don't make a decision, especially a purchase, on impulse. There may be something around you that is fool's gold. The other piece of this though is like a diamond in the rough or an element or opportunity that's there, but only after you do a little bit of clearing and cleaning. Now let's take a quick glance at all of the cards on the table and see what it's all about this month. So. Eight of Swords, there's your nebula, nebula rather. Um, rising up from a difficult experience, we see that with the Ten of Swords and the Judgment card. Stepping into something new, we have an Ace here, which is great. I've been seeing a lot of Aces in recent readings, so new opportunities. And it feels like you're going to land on your feet here because we have the Six of Wands. So whatever challenges are here, whatever decisions you're making, um, Justice and Judgment, really cool. Um, whatever you're, whatever's on your mind, you're making a good decision here. You've got two aces. Some of you may just be at this nexus where there's two really difficult and enticing decisions in front of you, and it's going to be all right. You're going to be able to discern them um, based on what I'm seeing here. Now let's go card by card. Let's start off with the centermost. Uh, so we have here the Six of Wands. It's in reverse. So, so many things are coming to my mind here. I want to start with the first, which is you don't have to repeat history. Let's say you're just coming off of something amazingly successful. Um, you just graduated, you just published something, you just got into a relationship, you just made someone really, really happy. Now comes the difficult part, which is what's next? Sometimes we feel like we have to constantly live in that state of, you know, always succeeding. Learning, life, experience, all of that, it's not, it's not a flat line. We have ups and we have downs, right? The heartbeat goes up and down, if you ever look at it on an EKG. So 
allow yourself to kind of be okay with wherever you are in that spectrum. And don't try to repeat history. That's this. Like, what was successful in the past won't necessarily be something that you can um, rinse, repeat, and continue to do endlessly. Try new things. Take a risk. It's okay if you're not always succeeding. As long as you're always learning, expanding, and you have that sense of fulfillment, you're exactly where you need to be. If something good comes to you, remember that mantra. I'm going to pull it back up here. The very last bullet says, I am worthy. Actually, start with that this month. You are deserving. You're ready. You're worthy to receive love, abundance, etc. in the highest forms. Love, abundance, and opportunity in the highest forms. So are you ready? Think to yourself, what is it that I need to be to feel ready and worthy? And then instead of thinking, am I or can I, just put I am. I am ready. I am worthy. And really focus on pulling that in, thinking of yourself as a magnet. And then when good things happen, say thank you. I worked hard for this. I am ready. So there could simply be um, a reconfiguration of old thought processes where it's just about getting over that Im imposter syndrome, um, the inner saboteur telling you that even though things are working out, that for some reason it's not going to last. That's the other thing. Don't wait for the other shoe to fall. When good things happen, they happen. And let's not worry about how long you're going to be on that sort of um, experience. Just take it one step at a time, okay? Success is something that you are primed to receive. It's not something that you have to, to do every single day. It's not something that you have to repeat. You also get to define what success means for you. It is a subjective thing. Success could be something like this, the legacy that you leave on this planet after you go. It could be educating or um, sort of like training someone to do something and, and then they're able to do that long after you. It could be the love that you experience, the knowledge that you gain, um, the things that you're able to see and, and remember. It does not have to equate to a title or, uh, you know, a certain financial status. There's so much more that this card means. So create whatever it is for you and let that be. Crossing this, we have the first of your two aces, an ace of cups. There could be new love coming into your life this month. The fact that it's crossing a success card indicates that this could be um, both advantageous, and that's why I, when, I, when we were talking about the channeled messages, I keep going back to this Ten of Cups, I was like, success in numbers, collaboration is key. So it starts with one person, but you may find that um, as this month continues that you end up meeting a new group of people or you're just able to um, find this connection or support that you didn't have before. Again, are you ready to receive? It's a question from the universe, just as much as it might be something that's coming forth. So there could be an invitation to a party. Someone could be expressing interest romantically for those that are looking. There could be a, a, a hand outstretched for friendship. Um, there could also be someone that needs your help. The, the sort of hands went both ways. Sometimes people need, sometimes they're giving, but you're in the flow of all of this this month. Relationships matter. Spend some time on those core relationships. Your family, your friends, your colleagues, and yes, romance. All of that is coming through center, um, front and center. So if you know I'm a very flexible reader, I won't simply focus on relationships, but if they're right here, I will highlight it. So please do focus on that. If there's any healing that needs to be done, etc., you have a chance to make it work this month with the Six of Wands. Just don't put too much pressure on yourself. Ace of Swords. So we have love and partnership coming through to help you out. Now we have some interesting things coming through in the deep past. It feels like you've already wrapped up some of this, but there could be um, a contract that you just signed, maybe for a new house or a new job. Could be marriage as well. Um, for some of you, this could also be a desire to do something. You have been thinking about it for a while and you finally sort of set it into motion. So this month is more about the follow through. And the fact that the Six of Wands came through at the center in reverse is basically saying, don't get too far ahead of yourself with this. There is this incremental message that keeps coming through one day at a time, one step at a time, one breath at a time. Yes, I want you to think of the future, but don't fixate solely on it. Also enjoy the present and realize that your ability to make decisions on the fly, it's every day it's affecting the future. So you don't just, just be as present and as intuitive as possible and you're going to be all right. If you are a creative type, this is a hands-on sort of card. So writing, painting, um, you know, building, 
all of these things, anything that you can do to bring it from here into the physical realm. Swords are very active, so really focus on the follow through. In the recent past and also in the crowning position, we have two cards of balance. You can see it a little bit easier here in this Six of Pentacles, so I'll bring it front and center. Um, the traditional Rider Waite Smith card, we have someone holding scales, really being picky and discerning with how they spend their time because your time, your energy, and your money, um, it's a gift. All of this stuff that you have to offer, think of it as a gift and kind of bestow it upon the most receptive, appreciative, and beneficial person. And that's really what this is about. So pick and choose wisely. When the card is reversed, some of you may be overextended. You may be spending too much money on something, too much time on something. You may also be reevaluating. We were talking about the depletion. I, I saw the plant that was wilted, kind of like E.T. It reminds me of Drew Barrymore's character whenever she was around the flowers and saw that E.T. was coming back to life. Um, it was basically symbolic of that rebirth or re regeneration energy. Um, if you're feeling depleted, figure out what it is that gives you that sense of plugging back in. For E.T., it was his friends and family. It was the ship that was coming back and giving him life. So for, for some of you, it may be the same thing. You may be missing that connection with loved ones because that, that movie came to mind both in meditation and also as I'm looking at this. What I love about the Six of Pentacles is a simple decision, yes or no, and how much can re-establish balance. It's as, as easy as just saying what you need and, and being picky and being discerning. You can create balance, okay? You can't please everybody. There's more hands outstretched than there are resources. So know that it's not only okay, but it's going to be necessary to have some people be unhappy with your decision. But good decisions, it's kind of like parenting. You can't, your, your kid may want to eat everything, do everything, spend everything, but you've got to kind of help them make smart decisions. So in life, it's the same way. And adults are just grown-up kids. So there's always going to be someone throwing a tantrum when you do the right thing. Trust in yourself. Take as much time as you need to make a decision. The Justice card is here in the upright position. It shows that you are fair, that you are thoughtful, that you're really trying to do what's right. That ultimately is what this card represents. What I would love to see in the outcome is an upright judgment card. Um, you as the Archangel just saying, here's what's next, here's how it goes. But when it's reversed, especially when we connect it to the decision, some of you may still be in a place where when you say something, it's kind of more in a form of a question, and I want you to get more in a declaration or statement phase so that you can say it with confidence, okay? Other things with justice. I really love that this is a card that shows like fairness, so I feel like some of you are trying to do the right thing or do right by someone. You may also be looking at if someone else has followed through on their own promises. If they said they were gonna do it, but they keep falling short, this is the time to really stand up for yourself, to also check in and make sure that they understood. Just spelling it all out, the letter of the law. Speaking of legal matters, this is a time to work with a lawyer if you have any sort of questions or concerns, um, getting any sort of legal things wrapped up like estate planning, um, copyright and trademarks. Uh, this can also be if you need to go to court to fight for something. It's advantageous and it's, it portends good things when justice is in the upright position here in the crowning position. So love that. And um, I think I've pretty much highlighted everything with this. Just equality, this is the last thing. I mean, literally she has an equal sign here in the center. Some of you just want to be taken um, and seen as an equal by someone else. And if they're unwilling or unable to really celebrate you as an equal contributor, then that gives you what you need to, to make a decision possibly to go in a different direction. Cutting through the ambiguity or the nebula. So eight of swords in the upright position would be blindfolded or unsure or uncertain or nebulous. In the reverse, it's basically cutting through all of the cloudy energy of this. So ask a very specific question. If you can't, again, if you don't understand something, if you don't like what you see, this is a chance to articulate your thoughts, your visions, your concerns, and get it out on the table. And basically reminding people that you're not going to ignore something. So it's kind of like Pandora's box has been open. Once it has, you have to just deal with whatever's out there. So uh, I think that's everything that I want to say with the Eight of Swords. There are a couple of health things here, which is, you know, if there's something going on in your body, don't ignore it. In particular, if you're overdue for a vision or a hearing test, get that taken care of. Okay, 
Now let's move on to how you're showing up this month. A few moments ago, I was showing you that mantra, which is I am worthy and I am ready, ready to receive love, abundance and opportunity in the highest form. The I am worthy piece, this card is summing up the challenge with that. Some of you might be used to accepting less than your worth, maybe because you were trained to as a kid. Um, parents, teachers, society kept telling you you're not worthy, you're not capable, or you just started to internalize things thinking, oh, this is good enough. To quote Sarah McLachlan, there's so much more than good enough. This card is like the devil that you know, and it's still a devil if we hold on to a person, place, or thing that we know is less than what we deserve or want, and we're doing it just because we're afraid of being alone or having space or the unknown, this is basically you cheating yourself of an opportunity of growth. And the fact that you got two aces tells me that there's something that needs to give or go. We have two cards of deciding and weighing that out. So if you need to say goodbye to something or someone, now is the time to do so. When it comes to negotiating a salary or looking at compensation, or again, just the return of your energetic investment, uh, this is you saying, it's not enough. You know what? It's not enough. I need a little bit more. So be your own best advocate in these situations. If you're trying to buy something, make sure that you're not being overcharged. If someone's trying to pay you something, make sure that you're getting exactly what you're worth and then some. And in general, it's better to create some space in your life rather than to hold on to all of this stuff. And, you know, I mentioned that the Nebula card can be clutter. So it could even be things in your physical environment where it's just starting to kind of like, uh, it's just kind of confusing you or creating clutter. So it's time to say goodbye and allow for uh, just clear and clean breathing too. Because when that's not there, then your mind is clear, your heart is clear, and you're allowing energy and opportunities to start to flow around you. But on a more figurative level, clearing out your schedule so it's not completely booked, clearing out your finances so that there's no debts and that you're not putting your, your money into too many things. And then in relationships, making sure that rather than worrying about being with everyone, you're really focusing on the core relationships that return the energetic investment. As we take a look at what's going on here in the environment, it is change, opportunity, and movement. The Fool is ultimately a great card for movement. It's also reminding you of the importance of letting go of baggage from the past. We literally see the number zero here. So entering into something with a clear mind, a clear heart, and also just kind of a, an open playing field. That's part of the reason I think it's so important to let go of some of this stuff that might be kind of uh, just, just creating a barrier between you and something new. This is a great time to take the first step in a new direction. This can also represent birthing, beginning, and exploring. So uh, if, if you feel stuck in any part of your life, this is also about just giving it a shot, taking it one step at a time. Again, a common theme right now. And let me see if there's anything else. Exercise. Simple, low impact exercise could be really advantageous. Just deciding to walk a little bit more, or if you have like a swimming pool, doing something that is low intensity, but really giving you a high return on that. And the power of changing the environment to also open yourself up to inspiration. As we take a look at hopes, fears, and opportunities, we have basically <laughs> the universe coming through and saying, it's all right if something doesn't work out the way you anticipated or you wanted it. There are two Ten of Swords in this deck. This one, instead of, instead of having the Ten of Swords at the bottom, it's just a statement, an affirmation. Everything is fine or everything will be fine. Sometimes we have to get to a point where we're agitated or where it's without a shadow of a doubt clear that something isn't for us. This is that kind of a full stop and it's basically the universe saying beyond this point of uh, frustration or inflammation or, you know, disappointment comes something better. We have all the beautiful uh, light in the background. A new day is breaking, but you have to kind of get through this moment. What we're looking at here is a fixation on perhaps the way something was communicated, the timing of it. It's almost like it's echoing in your head. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy here, where you could just be replaying a script in your mind thinking, if I only had said this, I wish I had done that. Hindsight always provides, you know, clearer perspective on things. When you're going through it, it's kind of this, it's the fog. So don't beat yourself up. That's what I'm getting from this. Take care of yourself. If you do um, sort of get in a 
p position where something you know breaks down, communication breaks down, or something falls apart, we see here that there's something better on the horizon. The fact that this is uh, connected to the Fool card is also saying it's okay to walk away from something. You can decide that you don't want it. You can decide to go in a different direction. This is about health and well-being. So if you're feeling high stress, if you've been working so much that you got sick, if you're just sick and tired, like that wilted flower that I was seeing in meditation, then that's all you need right now to know that it's all right to move on. You have one of the most powerful cards in the outcome. Ultimately, this is rebirth. This is a step in a better direction. It's a chance to reinvent, to reimagine. The fact that it's reversed shows hesitation, and I talked about this earlier. So one of the most important things you can do is to really get into a place where you feel clear, grounded, and ready. Don't take that first step until you are. Now, sometimes we don't get a choice in it, right? Sometimes people thrust us into a new opportunity. If you don't have a say in it, you're still going to be okay. This card is, it's the penultimate card, second to last. So you're moving towards the world. Sometimes like a mama bird has to nudge its a baby bird to, to spread its wings. The universe can do just that. And there are wings and there is an angel in this card. It's one of three of the powerful angel cards. The lovers, temperance card, and judgment all represent this ability for you to be guided and also land on your feet if you need or want to. Also, look in this card. There's other people that have been through this situation. If some of you are going through something challenging, lean on them. You do not have to make a decision on your own um, or in a vacuum, I should say. It's ultimately your decision to make, but you can weigh in and get other people's um, feedback, opinion, and experience to help you get that level of confidence that you need to, to step into something newer, better, and brighter. Let's expand this now to take a look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, beginning first with health, which is your mind, your body, and your spirit. In the energy, or I should say in the area of health, we have joy and contentment. And this is very much what I was talking about earlier when I was saying sustenance. Sustenance isn't just what you're eating or drinking. It's also things that feed into you um, and make you feel sort of like inspired and excited to, to, to get up every morning and experience things. So what are you doing in your life right now that is bringing a sense of joy, fun? And also when you complete a given task or spend time with someone, does it bring contentment? Um, joy and contentment need to be a part of your overall sort of experience in life, a piece of the pie. So if you're not getting that right now, the call to action for you, the homework, if you will, is to find something in your life to bring that sense of joy, of balance, of contentment, of sus uh, sustainability and sustenance. All right, let's now just take a look at these cards from face value and see what else is coming through when it comes to your um, general health and well-being. Standard disclaimer, I'm reading energy and looking at where it might be affecting you. Uh, so if you have anything going on with your health, obviously work with a professional. That disclaimer aside, let's get, let's get to business here. Um, I'm going to start with this card since I was drawn to it. This is tension and pressure. And what happens sometimes is we can be holding this in our, typically when I get this card, it can be shoulders and sometimes even across the chest, anxiety. Um, so some of you may be having some difficulty in um, breathing. It could even just be because there's so much going on that your chest is, um, it's almost like asthma that I'm getting with this. So meditation and breathing, obviously getting that checked out if you need to. Um, the other thing here can be holding on to a stressful situation, which we see here. Um, so stress relief is key. Exercise is the magical component between this. So you've, you've already got some answers with that. Hearing and vision, get it checked out if you're having any problems. Also, just don't ignore something going on in your body. If there's a small ache and pain now, you can avoid this by kind of figuring out what the root cause is. This can be pain in the back or an acute pain. Um, some of you may even have chronic pain. Please take care of it. We do see that moving the body is really key. So if you've been stationary or again, if you're just kind of in a stressed out state, that's exacerbating this. Uh, let's see what else balance issues overall. So this can be of course having the proper balance in your life work-life balance and other aspects of your life or it can simply be Maybe uh, vertigo or or inner ear issues. Obviously, those are bigger causes for concern, but uh, Take care of yourself. Make sure you're getting that rest as well because that was something that I picked up on earlier 
Other than that, it's looking pretty good. You may have a close brush with something that kind of scares you or, or wakes you up. It is a wake up call, very much that, and you can decide to go in a different direction. You have a couple of opportunities, one that's a little bit more mild, one that's very clear, and you can see it, you know, eight of swords to 10 of swords. Take the eight of swords where you're a little bit, you're like, I don't know, maybe I should go talk to someone or deal with it or whatever it is that you need to say no or release from your life. Now is the time. Uh, a nudge to get out and explore a little bit. And then when we were talking earlier about cleaning, if there's too much clutter in your space, definitely now is the time uh, to focus on creating some order. All right, that's everything for health. Let's go ahead now and move on to wealth, your resources, your life purpose, and your career. There were two cards that came through here. I'm just gonna leave the camera up and we'll talk about them. So we have the God or Emperor card here, and now we have the tree, which we could also connect with the Ten of Pentacles because it has the Tree of Life on it. With an Emperor type card reversed, basically this is reclamation of power. So we're looking at money, we're looking at resources, and just how you connect with others. Maybe you have a hard time speaking up, or this, there may be someone in your life that micromanages and has a hard time letting you do what you wanna do. Either way, this is your chance to step in and to feel that sense of power and empowerment. Uh, we can also look at God as a connection to spirit, so you might be deciding to channel and meditate and work with that creative energy a little bit more. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. The tree. Finding something in your life that brings stability, where you can really plant your feet, plant your roots, and really feel like this is something that you can grow at um, or grow in. And if you're not feeling that sense of growth potential, particularly in something that is career-oriented, it's time to, to find that. And this is the, the tree of life. It's also like the ten of pentacles. So we see new opportunities opening up and a chance to establish more wealth, more resources this month. Let's break this down into three major categories, those that are working, job seekers, those that are retired, and students. Starting off with those that are currently employed. Number one thing that I see here is potential burnout. There is a chance to avoid this, um, either getting burned out, getting sick, or having an argument. All of this is coming probably because of fatigue and stress. So take breaks. Um, feel free to walk away from something or say no. Um, also advocate for additional help and, and support. You do not have to do everything. Oftentimes, especially when you're working in major companies, they'll just keep putting things on your plate until you say no. And what you wanna do is make sure that you verbally say no before your body makes you say no. So um, there's a wake up call here for some of you not to go into this overworking phase because it can lead to more complications. Health, stress, and then possibly saying something that you regret. I do think that you're gonna be all right in the long run because people can see through that, um, but try to avoid this. Try to avoid this if you can. Now let's just look at it from a general perspective here. I think many of you have done very well here, Six of Wands. That's part of the reason you might have received praise or a raise or new opportunities and avoiding that inner saboteur like we talked about, that's one thing. Asking for help, delegating, that's a part of being a good leader. That's another. Make sure that you're doing things uh, by the books on some things. Justice is following rules, regulations, and policies. If anyone tries to get you to do otherwise, push back. The Eight of Swords is a kind of interesting card to come through in an existing job because it can represent that um, some of you are feeling like you're not part of the team or being appreciated or what you're saying isn't being heard. This is a month, especially when we got this um, leadership energy with with the Emperor or the God card to basically speak up and make sure that people do listen, do take into account what it is you have to say. Don't ignore something if it needs to be fixed or dealt with. This is also like a preventative maintenance thing. There may be something that everyone else is ignoring but you see needs to be attended to. Make sure that someone gets their eyes on that. Um, you can save yourself and other people time and energy down the line. In general, making sure that um, you're not underestimating tasks and that you're also getting rewarded appropriately. This could be someone, you <laughs> in the situation, that is not sort of getting the rewards in the form of raises or, um, or additional titles, etc. because someone falls short of what they promised to do. Hold them to account. Get it in writing, for sure. Anything that you want to see done, any sort of ideas that you have, record it and make sure that in the future you can kind of say, hey, we, we talked about this, we agreed to this. 
Uh, and ultimately, if you don't like it, if there's too much stress, if someone continues to take you for granted, we see a call to action here, which is give them a shot, give them a chance, like say what you need to say, but if they don't come through, it's time to move on, okay? And um, some of you may also be dealing with a merger, a change of uh, leadership. There could be a new boss, or again, it could be two companies coming together, and it looks like it'll be messy initially, but it will be okay in the long run. You just have to sort of figure out if you're okay with that nebulous in-between stage. Let's shift the energy now to those that might be job seeking and see what's coming through. If you're looking for work, uh, there's a little bit of frustration. I can see it with the Eight of Swords. Uh, what you're looking for may be difficult to see, or you feel like you're sending stuff out, not hearing back. This is saying, again, rejection is a form of protection. So for those sort of applications that just don't receive any follow-up, that might be okay. This is about imagining new ways in which to market yourself, new ways that your skills could be used, possibly trying something that isn't in your normal um, sort of, you know, plan. And I think that that could actually open you up to new experiences. Don't accept an offer that is basically undercutting your worth or your value. When it comes to the negotiation table, we do see the ability to get a little bit more. It's not like ridiculous amounts here, but it is saying there may be something that's 10 or 20% below what it should be. Make sure that when you negotiate, you add that um, to the padding. The fact that you have two aces here is also, for some of you, a choice. And we talked about this very much so in the justice card, even the six of pentacles. You're trying to figure out, is this, what, what sets these two options apart? Remember what came through in health and happiness here. It's joy and contentment. So where are you going to feel not just con the, like from a compensation standpoint, but from a creative and just fulfillment standpoint, like this is where I want to be. That could tip the scales, no pun intended, but it could tip the scales in the right direction and help you make a choice that's going to um, take care of you both creatively and also financially. For those that have just more of a tactical question, Nicholas, where can I find this? There's an encouragement to look around a little bit. It doesn't have to necessarily involve travel. It's just saying um, clear your mind of preconceived notions and possibly reimagine how you could package together all of your skills. And this could be you just kind of exploring a job that in the past you wouldn't have considered, but now you do. Also, if, if you're trying to do this without connections, it's going to be difficult. If we go back to what I was talking about at the very beginning, the power of collaboration, it's definitely coming through here. So it's who you know. And if there's anyone in your life that can help you make that connection, that can also help you get your foot in the door, have someone listen to you and really take your, your resume or your application seriously. Because I see it possibly just falling under the radar. So connect with others, possibly even having someone that can walk the resume to the hiring manager or the, the person that's going to make the decision is going to be key. It may take slightly over a month for you to get the movement that you want. We see success at the center here, but it does have the number six. So it could be a week or it could be six weeks. Um, give yourself the time to make the right decision. Two sixes in a row. So and even like six to eight as we're looking at all the center here. So give yourself a month and a half possibly to find what you're looking for, but I do see it coming through in the long run. Let's quickly focus on students, then we'll look at retirees. Students, here's what I see. I love that success is at the center. It looks like you've learned the importance of balance. Keep making smart decisions when it comes to how you're spending your time and energy. There is this um, tendency to take on too much. So make sure that as you're looking at the next month, that you don't overload your schedule. The Ten of Swords here can just be this, this sort of burnout. We don't want that either. Um, if you are in a period where it's a break, like summer break or, um, or winter break, then what we have, because I'm reading also for the Southern Hemisphere, what's important here is to take some time and just do nothing. I know you're like, what? Yes. I, as a student, sometimes we're focusing so much on the pressure of trying to perform that you don't give yourself free time to just kind of like absorb everything. So zero. I, I would love for you to have a little bit of your schedule where you can just rest, you can have some fun with friends, you can take care of your health. Opening up your schedule is key, but ultimately you're fine. The six of wands shows success. 
Judgment here could also be some of you deciding to change trajectory or you're looking at what comes after graduation. The one thing that Spirit really wants me to highlight is that flexibility is key to your success. If you try to put yourself too much in a box, the universe is gonna come through every three to five years and shake things up. You just have to be willing and ready to evolve and roll with the punches. Technology is changing at such a rapid clip right now that I think it's important to have some core skills and then have some skills that can help you, especially if you have an affinity for math, science, programming, anything of that nature, you're gonna be in a great space because we're gonna see more of that. But everybody, we're always gonna need good communicators, we're always gonna need people in traditional fields like medicine. Pick what feels right for you and then adapt. Um, and know that it's not going to look the same five, 10, 15, or 20 years down the line. So your openness to kind of look at things with a clean perspective, a clean slate and say, well, this is the new norm. Let's see how I can evolve in that. That's going to be key. We can't be so rigid anymore um, because the landscape changes on a sometimes in, on a daily basis, but definitely on a monthly and yearly basis. So just try to have some fun with the ambiguity and know that this also represents possibilities. Retirees, let's take a look at you. Self-care is first. Um, for many of you, pushing back on some of the other stuff that's going on in your life and really focusing on finding the necessary balance, the things that bring the most joy and stability to you. And for some of you, this is just the freedom to do what you want to do, including travel. And this does not have to be kind of hopping into a plane. This could just be seeing and doing things around wherever it is that you live. Um, definitely a little bit of concern over money, but it feels like things are slightly better than they appear. It's just about making smart choices here. Um, there could be new love coming into your life, retirees, um, or new opportunities that bring joy to you. And now is the time to really embrace that. All of that being said, speaking of love, let's go to the next portion of this reading. We're going to look at uh, love and romance and friendship. And the card that you got here was a gateway card. So things are changing and opening up if you're ready, if you're open, if you're prepared to step through that gateway. Breaking it down into three major categories, those that are in a relationship looking for love are single and happy. If you're already in a relationship, it looks like you put in a lot of work to make this solid, and we have a card of success here. I always want to see the Ace of Cups in a relationship spread. The fact that it's at the center tells me that there's still love and passion. I always want to see a communication card, so it looks like historically you've had good communication. However, you could be on the heels recently of an argument or a feeling like, you know, you're not listening to me or you're not watching me or you're not validating, you know, who I am. So just there's still some opportunity right now to open up. The gate is an opening card. So open up in communication and just allow for some more space um, and check in. Checking in is key. I think that the reason this could be happening is overwork or, again, just too many things on your plate. So make sure that the two of you walk away from some of those stress-oriented things and walk toward one another and create like a date night and some together time. You do not have to, uh, you're not responsible for balancing everything out in the relationship. It's a 50-50, it's a two-way street. So remember that it takes two to tango and just asking for help, you, you, you don't have to do it all. I'm gonna keep saying that because I saw that in the community message that I had on channel messages. Um, judgment, close call with something that was uncomfortable. Again, it could have been an argument, there could have been a, a wake-up call with health. Um, some of you also, got to a point where you wondered, can we do this? Maybe you were wondering, should I stay or should I go? And it feels like right now, it's still kind of up for decision. I love what I see here in the past, but it's important to have some of that right here and right now. So if, if communication is failing, do your best, maybe get some help if you need it. Um, it feels like some of you may also just have a baby. The Fool and the Ten of Swords can be a crying baby. It will get better. It, it takes a little bit of time. And what you're seeing here with the Judgment card is mourning. <laughs> mourning the loss of that, uh, that sleep and that rest. So if there's a change that just happened, both of you, it's going to take some adjustment. Even just moving in together can result in some of this. Uh, but if we take a look at this diagonal, past, near future, and outcome... If you can get back to the communication, things will be all right. There has to be some sort of meeting in the middle. 
What was isn't now, and that's okay. Kind of like I was talking about with careers. Change is a constant, and it's important to embrace change and see if the two of you can grow together. Uh, if you can't, then it's going to be diverging. But I think there's a good chance of mending whatever challenges may be here. This could just be health. It could be overworking. It could be the addition of a child or change. So communicating with that, being patient as these things happen, that's going to be key. All right, if you're looking for love this month, what do you want? That's the first thing that I see here with the Nebula card. This reminds me of like a ring around your finger, a golden ring. Can you find it? Yes, you can actually. Um, it's something where you wouldn't necessarily meet this person on an app, but it could be a public event, um, a wedding, uh, some sort of networking opportunity. You could just be out and about. The Six of Wands is a very public card. Spirit's coming through and saying, do you have enough time and energy right now? And do you have enough clarity to kind of, first of all, manifest what you're looking for and then keep it around? I, I think the main thing for you is to focus on healing, clarity, and then just put yourself out there. When you're ready, it will come through. It could be a Libra, by the way, because we have justice in the crowning position. Um, and other than that, it's pretty open. So that's why I want you to be clear on what it is that you're looking for. Past life energy, past life karma. Don't try to talk yourself into a tr like being attracted to someone. You either feel that connection, the mutual attraction, or you don't. All right, so we looked at those who are in a relationship, single and looking. For those that are happily single, um, the focus right now is on possibly taking a leap of faith into something new and unexpected. And also, it looks like you're finally balancing out your health and your finances. Those are the big areas of growth this month and then possibly some travel on the horizon for you as well. Um, I do think it's going to be a successful month. So for those of you that want to put a little bit of energy into work, put your passion there. Absolutely. Now let's take a look at your destiny message. So we have beauty coming through on this card. It is reversed. There may be too much of a focus on, um, I, I mentioned fool's gold, right? Something that is supposed to be beautiful could come through and you're, you look at a person, a place, or an opportunity, and it just it wasn't what you expected. Then there could be something where you didn't think you would have as much affinity to, towards it, but once you have a chance to connect, you're like, oh, this person or this experience or this job, it's more than I thought. Look beyond um, external sort of projections. Everything that glitters isn't necessarily gold. Sometimes there's a diamond in the rough, and I think you have a chance to find that in the way of love or opportunity this month. Let's dig a little deeper into sun rising and moon sign messages and see what's in store. Sun, rising, and moon. All right, in the sun sign, we have the three of pentacles in the reverse state. Let's take a moment just to look at the traditional card and then I'll break down the differences. Um, in the traditional one, we see a card that represents education. It's a great time to train yourself on a new skill, um, en enroll in school or any sort of educational experience, even reading or learning something new, all of that is a part of this. Uh, the fact that this is reversed could mean that some of you are picking up something that you walked away from. So getting a GED or going back to school or allowing yourself to chase something that you put away in the past because someone said you couldn't do it. Now you're like, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to go after this dream and I'm all for that. In the reverse state, this also represents revision because this is a writing card. So keeping an open mind to things and taking in constructive feedback. Opening up to, to get that feedback from others can be one of the most mm, vulnerable things, right? As a creator, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a blueprint for construction or it's some sort of you know fiction project that you worked on, whenever it's something that you want to create and you have a lot of investment in it, getting the constructive feedback, you know, it can be a little bit daunting, but it's very much worth it. The sooner the better with respects to that. Putting things into writing, very important as well. If you're not getting the validation that you want right now, both the Six of Wands and the Three of Pentacles were reversed. Usually these, this is about success and recognition, so is this. It doesn't mean that you're not on the right path. It just means you might be on that sort of bleeding edge. You might be there. You might be the first person there, so it takes people a minute to wrap their head around it. This is also super creative. So what are you doing right now to take your ideas and somehow bring them into the physical realm? We have, again, writing and action, and then we also have you know, somehow putting it into uh, a form that people can like. And it doesn't have to be, so I, I mentioned the um, Ace of Swords, it can be both painting and writing, and we have actually painting in this particular deck. So 
painting a picture, showing a demonstration, creating a prototype, all of that stuff is coming through. Pretty successful. If you wanna learn something new, if you need to get some feedback, if you wanna collaborate, just good energy when it comes to work, production, and resources. Three of Pentacles is a great card. As we take a look at rising, we have the Four of Wands. This can represent a very stable, very positive relationship or opportunity. It is the firmest of foundations. It's exactly what you're looking for in friendship, love, or opportunity. And you know what's interesting is now this card makes a lot more sense. If something fell away or if something was disappointing, it was so you could look at this, so you could turn your head in a new direction and walk towards it or something could walk into your life. That's also why it was important to let go of something, to create space for something bigger, better, and brighter. And what's interesting is when someone comes through and maybe it's a breakup or maybe someone is you know firing you or there's something that comes out where it's like that's not what i wanted to hear or someone says even more importantly um i've heard this before where someone declared that they weren't a good person or that someone deserved better whenever this happens what i typically say is i'm sorry to hear that um thank you for letting me know I don't try to argue them out of uh, sort of insecurity because it's usually not insecurity. If someone says to you that you deserve better than them, say, thanks for letting me know. That's it. You don't have that, that you don't, because past that point, you're always going to be wondering why they, they didn't see themselves as an equal and why you're accepting less than that. Um, this is really, really important in friendships too. I remember this didn't happen directly to me, but to a friend where someone warned that friend that, you know what, they had a bad history of just disappointing people in friendships. They said to that other person, I'm not a good friend. I typically just end up walking away. And that's what happened. They were ghosted. And later uh, had a conversation with me saying, why didn't I listen to that person when they said it? So listen and accept and embrace something, even when it's uncomfortable and comes through because it's bringing you a four of wands. Rejection is protection and it's aligning you towards something very, very stable. Some of you may be proposing to someone else or getting proposed to. You could be signing a contract. You might be getting some really good news right now. Across the board, love it. Rising and ascendant can definitely have to do with your career and your trajectory. So if you're on that track, good for you. And remember what I said, don't get in your headspace too much. Enjoy it for as long as it's there. And there doesn't have to be another shoe that's falling. You could just be in a really good period in your life. Take it at that. As we look at the moon sign, we have love. The lover's card coming through. It is reversed, but it's still a very magnetic and positive energy. Don't undersell or underestimate your value. That is part of what was happening here. You are worthy, but are you ready? <laughs> you have to feel worthy and ready for all of that abundance and love to come through. Don't force the connection. It either feels good or it doesn't. Know that you are being guided and don't second guess good news. I, I wanna keep saying that for you this month. If something positive happens, it's because you worked hard at it and you're ready, hopefully, and worthy of that as well. And that's pretty much everything with this. Um, don't turn your back on love. Some of you may have said to yourself or to others, I'm done with this. I don't need love or friendship or whatever anymore. The universe is coming through and saying, are you sure? Because I might have someone for you. So be open to a pleasant surprise there. Let's now turn our attention to the final question and the final card for today. This can be anything that you still need some advice on, which I haven't already answered. So just hold that question in your mind and in your heart and talk about synchronicities. We have the Ten of Cups. So um, why don't I pull up what I talked about a little bit earlier and we'll, we'll compare and contrast these two messages. Um, so I mentioned at the very beginning the importance of collaboration and um, this card came through reverse. So some of you may just have a difficult time in allowing yourself to receive feedback, positive praise, sort of like a job well done, someone that is reaching out a helping hand, um, so if good things come your way, just say thank you. Uh, this can also be peer or familial pressure to measure up or to meet their expectations. You get to decide what you want to do. It's your life. Um, you may live many lifetimes, but you only live this one once. So do what brings what? Joy and contentment. It's yours to have, yours to celebrate. So you're not living for your parents, for your friends, or for, for society. You're living for yourself. And that's the main reminder on this one. But we keep getting very positive cards. Four of Wands, the Lovers, and the Ten of Cups. These are all great partnership energies. Not only that, but right at the center was the Ace of Cups. So I definitely feel like love, partnership, and friendship 
are starting to knock on the door this month if you're ready and willing uh, to accept. If you ask me a yes or no, pretty simple here. Yes, as long as you're doing it for you. Don't sacrifice your happiness for the acceptance of others. Success should not come at that kind of a cost. Um, that's the only caveat there, but otherwise 10 of cups is yes. All right. That my friends is everything. This is a really powerful reading today. So thank you for allowing me to be the channel and to be present here. If you liked it, please like, and subscribe. It helps me understand that this brought value. It helps other people find the video. You can also give me a follow on social media. So you never miss a future broadcast here and you're up to date with all the news and information. So Nicholas Ashball on all major platforms. If you happen to see someone that's offering a private reading or direct messaging you, you can just flag that profile. It's not me. If you want to give some love and support right here on YouTube, you can do it in the form of super stickers, super chat, um, also memberships and join me on my Sunday live streams if you'd like to as well. It's really great to see everybody each and every Sunday at 9 15 a.m. Um, I think that's everything for today. So I just want to say at the end of the day here, thank you so much for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube. I hope you found some value in today's reading. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're dealing with this month and what resonated. Until I see you next time, have a great one. Bye-bye.